All right, so let's get into our first type of pictorial that we're going to be uh, learning. So the first one's going to be isometric. Um, we're going to touch on oblique, and we are going to do a little bit of practice on it. But isometric is definitely one of the most important types of pictorial drawings you can learn. Um, Multi-view drawing is going to be very, very important as well. But um, you're going to see that multi-view drawing has isometric, so you really need to understand how to do isometric drawings first. So um, what are pictorial drawings? Well, they're a 2D illustration of a 3D object, meaning you're going to be learning how to draw 3D objects. Um, we're going to be learning about ISO, oblique, and perspective, again, focusing more on ISO than anything else. Um, and these are kind of three, uh, four pictures that kind of show you different ways that we could represent the same thing, okay, just in a slightly different style. So um, with oblique pictorials, um, the way you really want to think about it is you're going to take this object and put it on a front face. So what they did here, and I'll use my pen now, um, they look at the object from the front, they rotate the object, and now you get this front facing. So this box is this box. Um, we'll say box B is box B. Box C is box C. Um, so you can see kind of how they rotate the angle so it's front facing and then they just take it back so you know nothing too crazy about it you get pretty good at um, oblique drawings it's pretty easy to understand so there's two different types of oblique drawings though let's get to that one there's cavalier and cabinet um, the difference is the depth so when we deal with cavalier um, that's going to be, I think I put it on the next slide, let's see. Yeah, Cavalier is full depth, so let me hide this. Cavalier is full depth, meaning um, if it's two boxes deep, then you're going to go two boxes deep, whereas Cabinet is half depth, so if the object looks like it goes four inches back, you're going to draw it looking like it goes two inches back. And it might go kind of against what your convention is, but the one that's half depth is actually the one that's going to look the same. Sorry, going to look more realistic. Um, it's actually cabinet that we use most often when it comes to oblique drawings. Cavalier ends up looking too long, um, even though it's actually the right depth. So we'll go into it when we actually start practicing. Oblique drawings, um, you're going to use a glass box method, which means basically imagine it's inside a glass box you could go ahead and start drawing um, the original box that it's framed within give it the original depth half depth is um, cabinet so really you're going to see the cabinet's going to look better than cavalier but we'll try to do both so i'm going to go kind of quickly through it then you start drawing the top face and outline using construction lines um, some of the main kind of cuts of the object then you retrace it with object lines so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. You can review it after. But you'll notice that actually cabinet looks more realistic than the Cavalier. Cavalier looks a little kind of like long. Um, it'll definitely look that way with a lot of other stuff. Um, here are examples of oblique pictorials. Again, I'm not spending a lot of time on here because what I really want to talk about oh, is isometric drawings. Now isometric drawings are when you take an object and you look at it from kind of a corner and you try to imagine all three faces of the object, so both the front, right, and top view at the same time. So all these kind of lines come off at a 30 or 120 degree angle. Um, something to note, your engineering notebook that I gave you guys um, has both isometric and oblique paper. So one side is uh, what we call orthographic, and the right side is called isometric paper. So um, we're going to be using both styles of paper. So with isometric drawings, you're trying to represent the height, width, and depth all in one kind of image. These are two kind of views of an isometric. So you'll note that um, we call the front is the most you know um, obvious face of the object. It's the one that's most indicative of its actual shape. Um, and it's really important that you select the best front view. So on something like this, the red is definitely the front view because it's the most indicative of what this object looks like. Um, you want to have the fewest hidden lines in the front view. You want to have the kind of the widest dimension, whether that means the height, width, or depth. It's going to be the longest dimension or the biggest dimension. 
and it's the most natural position for the object to be in. So when I think of a car, even though we call the front hood where the headlights are, I would draw the car typically from the side, and so that's actually going to be called the front view, even though it's not really the front of the car. Okay. So an object like this, this is the best front view. Why? Because it's the most indicative of the shape. Uh, it has the longest dimension, it's the way it rests. That's why the back side isn't the front view, instead it's this side specifically. So with isometric, we're going to use the box method again. And so the bottom drawing is a really good example of what a lot of students kind of start messing up with. And you'll notice that the most common mistakes, so when you start doing peer review, you'll start noticing it as well. Lines that should be parallel aren't. So lines like that and that, they should be parallel. So if they're parallel in real life, they should be parallel on your drawing. Right, so that line is parallel to that. That line is parallel to this line. Here, this line is definitely not parallel to this line. Um, they're at a skew, and a lot of students do that. And not only that, the height should go straight up and down. So this one right here, the fact that it's at an angle, would mean you know it should be straight up and down, up and down, up and down. So when we're building height, unless it's at an angle, it should be straight up and down. That's very common um, errors that we'll see. So again, more examples, you can do things like circles and there's a whole actually PowerPoint on it if you wanna check out how to do you know circular objects. Um, so here's one example. If I take something like this, again, I'm using construction line to draw my box. And then I start using my object line to go ahead and darken the actual object outline. And then um, if I wanna do things like tonal shading, um, the more lines you, use or the darker you get it so this is with a pencil but I could use this with a pen and I'll show you guys that in class how you can use cross hatching to go ahead and create shading another example um, some people do this and that's fine you still start with your construction box you definitely want to do that then some people actually use this method you do the ABC method so you kind of try to pick out every single little point on here. And so you'll note that there's every single like A, B, C, D, and then you're just trying to connect the dots. I actually do this pretty often. And then you're like, oh, I just gotta connect them. So there we go. And we've traced the object up. Okay. Tonal shading, like I said, the more lines you use, um, the darker it is, the farther it is away from the sun. Here's an example of an isometric sketch. Sketch looks very beautiful. Um, using pencil to go ahead and shade it. Okay. Here's an example of a chair. Here's a real life example of the original Tupperware that um, the Tupper Errol Tupper used when he was patenting the Tupperware. All right, and those are my sources. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, only way to learn is really get some practice. I hope you guys have a chance.